what's going on in our school today. So, but in the words, say, so by 2012, what do we have coming out of our education? What, 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 caliber, what caliber of pastors do we have coming out of our education system that's going to eventually come into the local churches and, be, and become pastors? Whatever that education is, is what they're going to come and bring to the local churches. And it just in, it's, it's been a progress. L.G. White says, Satan is seeking gradually to rob his message, this message of his power so that God's people will not be able to stand. And so as these, and she says, these, these pastors, many will come into the message under their pastorship, but they won't know anything. And it's evidence. So we have a church, few church full of members that don't even know this message. So when I say, you see what we have as pastors. So I'm, we, let's, now let's look at the local church. So we have a pastor coming out of an education system right here, and here he is down here, then I want you to look at the church itself. And I hope my, my tech is getting all this on screen. I want to make sure you get this. You got to see this in, in action. So now, saints, our local church in 2012 is, is represented by the pastor that's standing in the pulpit. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So you see the local church, what has happened. The local church is a black. In other words, saints, there's no light there. And, we, and we, that's the cry everywhere. Brother Mason, I get calls all the time. Brother Mason, what are we going to do? So our churches are black. There's no light there. Now, saints, remember, pastors feeds the local conference. In other words, pastors move up the ranks and move into the conference. So all through history, as we become, become a people, the pastors come out of edu the education system. They come and begin to be pastors in the local church, and then they move up to conference, and then the unions, and the division, and the general conference, et cetera. So here we see, if we follow this, this scenario, then as these pastors have come out and moved to the rank, they have taken their beliefs up into the conferences. So today, saints, with the, church, with the pastors that will come out, will move into the conference, and the conference will also be black. No light there. Now, from the local conference, they will move into the unions, and when they move into the unions, they will become black, be no light there. And it's just a natural progression. Because whatever they believed in the local church is what they will take to the conference, what they will take to the union. And then they will move from the unions to the, di the divisions, brothers and sisters, and then there will be no light there. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? It is time to finish the work. And then, saints, on into the general conference. Now, look what has happened. Now, there's a circle. In other words, the council has metastasized. It is darkness all the way. But you know what the Bible says, what the Spirit of Prophet says? She says, God, when he sees this, that God would take control of the work. And this is amazing that the prophet said he would take control of the work at the head. That's the very quote. He would take control of the head of the work. So what has happened? Look what she says here. She says the great heart of the work is at blank. That was Bow Creek at the time. And as the human heart throws this living current of blood into all parts of the body, so does the management of this place. The headquarters of our church affect the whole body of believers. So whatever is taking place at headquarters affect the whole body of believers. So when Satan got to control the education system, his goal was to get control of the headquarters. And it's been a gradual, prolonged work. He has been gradually doing this. He has controlled the education system. And now he's moving on up to the conference, to the unions, to the division, to the general conference. So he now has a, it's all metastasized. The whole thing is corrupt. The whole head. Listen to this thing, saints. So does the management of this place. The headquarters of our church affect the whole body of believers. If the physical heart, look at, look at the prophet. If the physical heart is healthy, the blood that is sent from it through the system is also healthy. But if this fountain is impure, the whole organism becomes diseased by the poison of the vital fluids. So it is with us. If the heart of the work becomes corrupt, the whole church in its various branches and interests scattered abroad over the face of the earth suffers in consequences. And brothers and sisters, now I, I just have to be straight with you. Before Elder Wilson took over, saints, 
headquarters was future things. But God says, when this was happening, that he would take control of the head of the work. Now watch this. So, brothers and sisters, the heart of the work is diseased terribly. That's the heart. It's dis- that's a diseased heart right there. The heart was diseased. And so, when, when the heart became so diseased, God says, I will take control of the head of the work. And he brought in Ella Wilson. Are you with me, Sam? Watch this thing, I said. Now, what was the purpose of God bringing Ella Wilson at this point in time? When a heart, when you have heart disease, they will give, when a heart, when the arteries get clogged up, they put what is known as a stent in it. So let's put a stent in his heart. There is a stent. Ella Wilson represents a stent that had been put into the heart of the work. Here is the stent. But remember, a stent does not cure the heart. It simply opens up the blood vessel so blood can again flow to the heart. What Ella Wilson is, what God has done through Ella Wilson is put a stent in so that the truth can again flow to God's people, brothers and sisters. And saints, this is a window of opportunity to finish the work. Can you imagine what will happen if Ella Wilson passes off the scene? Can you imagine what will happen, brothers and sisters, if he had never been brought on the scene? Ella Wilson is simply a stent. Ella Wilson can't stop this. Bless his heart, he's doing all he can, but he cannot stop it. But he has a stent that is allowing blood to flow again so that we, brothers and sisters, can finish this work. Listen, saints, Ella Wilson cannot fire one professor. He can't shut out any of these corrupt schools. Listen, look look at the pastors that are scattered all over the world now that come out under this corrupt education system and what they're teaching the, the members of the church. So Ella Wilson can't stop this. But he is a stent that is allowing blood to flow just for a little while longer, brothers and sisters, so that we and you and I can see the truth. So that we, brothers and sisters, can finish this work so that Jesus can come. Oh, you want to be a part of this team, saints? Now I'm going to give you a clip. It's a six-minute clip. I didn't make the clip. Another group made the clip. And many of you probably have already seen it because it's been floating around on the web and what have you and emails and what have you called Keep Not Silent. I'm going to play this clip now because it fits right in with what I'm talking about. Ella Wilson is standing. Now watch what Ella Wilson says in this. Watch this whole deal of what's going on. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Please, let's be proud. Let's pray before we watch this clip. It's six minutes. Now, I'm just going to let the clip speak. I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to let the clip speak. Then we'll talk afterwards. Father in heaven, please help thy people to understand what's taking place. It's time to finish the work, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's watch the... is a little sensitive, but I want you to understand it completely. Avoid the practice when I speak to our church leaders locally and in our organized entities. Avoid the practice of inviting major spiritual speakers who are not Seventh-day Adventists. Avoid having them speak to church meetings, men's meetings, women's meetings, retreats, pastoral meetings, youth meetings, and large convocations. But what I am talking about is asking them to give a major spiritual presentation where they probably simply do not have the concept of the great controversy theme. Amen.
created brothers and sisters. Denominations denominated certain reforms which, when they were received into the bloodstream of the whole church, presumably those denominations would disappear in a larger ecumenical whole. This church is not just another denomination. It is a unique heaven-initiated movement. Well, what happens once the rest this of the church begins to say yes to those kinds of, of denominated of distinctiveness? Uh, distinctive claims. Andrew is inviting him to now speak at their, the at churches their college, that bore University. witness to those things begin to find their way into the whole body of Christ? The Seventh day Adventist Church, my brothers and sisters, is on a heaven directed journey. Amen. And we are almost home. Never doubt the destiny of this mighty Advent movement. Um, I don't worry about uh, the denominations dying. I'm just not sure you can beat them to death with a stick because <laughs> there comes a point at which you've got to say, enough, we have heard the witness. <laughs> but there's one body of Christ. And insofar as you bear witness to other names, you obscure the wholeness, which is God's will and God's gift. Methodist is a wonderful adjective, but it's an idolatrous noun. One should not be a Methodist. You are Methodist Christians. One is not a Presbyterian. You are Presbyterian Christians. And so insofar as denominations bear witness to the adjective, they are counterproductive to the witness of the gospel. Insofar as they are vital aspects of renewal absorbed into the whole of the church, they are glorious parts of the tradition and I celebrate. And compromising activities of ecumenism You please read this thing. The signs of Christ's coming are increasing in frequency and intensity every day. Destructive events in nature, the great confusion of world politics, the pervasive and compromising activities of ecumenism, the dramatic increase and influence of spiritualism, the deterioration of world economies, the disintegration of societal and family values, the disbelief in the absolute authority of God's word and the Ten Commandments, rampant crime and moral decay, wars and rumors of wars, and on and on and on all point unmistakably to the climax of Earth's history. Brothers and sisters, it is time. Yes. The Lord is coming soon. He wants to use his remnant church in a most powerful way. Let us not make God wait any longer to begin the latter reign so that Jesus can come. God is telling us we have come to the end of time. Go forward. Brothers and sisters, it is time to finish the work. How much more evidence do we need? Andrews University is inviting 